Lesson four is on the trends of the atomic radius. So we're going to talk about atomic radius, utilizing table S, understanding the periodic trend, and also ionic radius. So atomic radius of a chemical element is a measure of the size of the atoms, the distance from the center of one nucleus to the boundary of the surrounding electron cloud. And the way they do this is they actually measure the distance from nucleus to nucleus and then cut that in half. Atomic radius, or the size of the atom, can be found for every element on table S. It is in picometers, it's on the last column. So the trend for the atomic radius is that all atoms will decrease in size as you go from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, from group 1 to group 18. The reason why is that nuclei have greater nuclear charges, also called the nuclear pull, which forces the electrons closer to the nucleus. That means the outer electrons are closer to the nucleus and more strongly attracted to the center. Therefore, it becomes more difficult to remove the outermost electron, which causes them to shrink in size. Think about it this way. The more positive the center, the more likely those negative electrons will be attracted. So if you were to look at, let's say, period 4 and period 6, you will notice on table S, if you were to pick any of those two, the ones on the left will always be larger and they will progressively get smaller as you go to the right. The trend as you go down the group is that the size will get bigger. Uh, the number of principal energy levels increases as you go down a group as the number of electron increases. Each subsequent energy level is further from the nucleus than the last. Therefore, the atomic radius increases as the group and energy levels increase. So as you look at this diagram, the more principal energy levels, the bigger the atom. So as you go, for instance, from beryllium down to barium, you'll notice that beryllium is the smallest of the group and barium is the largest. It's also the difference between two rings for beryllium and six rings for barium. But the trend can be in any group. They all will increase in size as you go down a group. So again, just looking at the main group elements, that's any, that there's no transition metals. They all follow the same path. From left to right, they get smaller. From top to bottom, they will all get bigger. So cation radius is going to have a little bit of a different story than just atomic radius. These are positive charges, which means they have lost their electrons from their outermost energy level, which means they lose the whole ring. Ionic radius, therefore, gets smaller, and when the atoms lose electrons, they lose that principal energy level that is on the outside. Anion radius is all about the fact that nonmetals are going to be gaining electrons. As the nonmetals gain electrons, their ionic radius will be larger than their atomic radius. They're gaining. So when they do that, their existing electrons will be repelling each other, thus expanding their radius. So always use table S to compare two elements in the same period or in the same group when discussing atomic radius.